Yeah, eat shit. Yeah, that's it. Eat it all up. Hi, everyone. Hi, thank you. All right, yeah, calm down, calm down. Let's just get on with it, shall we, fuck's sake. Uh, so Wayne Shaw got in trouble for eating a pie this week, didn't he? I'm not saying that guy's fat, but they're the only club where the goal line technology is in widescreen. <laughs> Uh, he's a big lad, big lad, Wayne Shaw. When he makes a save, the slow motion replay is just a replay. <laughs> Gay people making a lot of fuss about getting married at the moment, aren't they? I should think the best thing about being gay is not having to get married. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> to my wife, anyway. I, actually, I, I, I shouldn't say that. Helen, you know I love you very much. <clears throat> so, the Tories won the Copeland by-election. Copeland? Copeland? I guess you could call that a police state. Stuart Copeland was the drummer in the police. You should know that. I can't do all the work. You, you've got to do some reading if this is going to work. Has this gone viral yet? I told you to make this go viral. Fuck's sake. <coughs> it's Saturday night. It's almost live. And it's right up a big tower in London's Westminster. It's Sam Delaney's news thing. Braced for Storm Doris this week. Battening down her hatches, it's Fern Brady. Recording 87 mile per hour gusts, it's Steve First. Hanging out her washing anyway because Mother Nature's nothing but a fusty old slag, it's Vanessa Feltz. And our special guest, he's the controversial Corbin criticizing MP for Rochdale, whose name sounds like a Russian sneeze. It's Simon Danchuk. Kazuntite. Hello and welcome to Sam Delaney's News Thing. Thanks for joining me, panel. So, the by-election results are in. Usually, by-elections are quite tedious and predictable. They're an opportunity for voters to give the government a bloody nose by voting in the opposition as a protest. But this time, the opposite happened, and the government actually took the seat of Copeland, a constituency that's been traditionally Labour for almost a century. This is the first time in history that people have used a by-election as a protest vote, not against the government, but against the opposition. <laughs> It's a protest vote against the protest vote. It's like trying to win a fight with your wife by having sex with a girl who used to bully her at school. <laughs> but obviously, there's no way that Labour could have won a seat they've been winning for the last 80 years, as John McDonnell helpfully explained after the results came in. There's really unique circumstances in Copeland. The, the Labour vote has been eroding over, well, a number of elections now, but this issue around the future of the nuclear industry clearly dominated that election campaign. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> what are the Tories doing fighting elections on issues that their constituents care about? It's just not fair. It's hardly Labour's fault that the people of Copeland aren't interested in Jeremy's plans to disband the army and use the money to restore our Victorian manhole covers to their former glory. <laughs> but it wasn't all bad news for Labour. They managed to hold on to the traditional Labour seat of Stoke against UKIP. They're now celebrating seeing off what is essentially a lunatic fringe party in one of their bloody heartlands. That's like me beating my five-year-old son at penalties and then celebrating by running around the back garden with my shirt over my head, shouting abuse at him. <laughs> Obviously, I do do that, but I'm not the leader of the opposition, am I? I'm just a man with broken dreams about playing for England. Despite the blow, UKIP leader Paul Nuttall said UKIP was not going anywhere. Well, there's your new party slogan right there, mate. <laughs> UKIP. We're not going anywhere. This should be UKIP's time. Brexit's here. Everyone's now a racist. If ever there was a time when UKIP should make it into the political mainstream, it's today. And yet, in the early hours of Friday morning, Paul Nuttall was being consoled by the monster raving loony party candidate who got 200 votes and went by the name The Flying Brick. <laughs> I tell you what, when you're at a by-election and the flying brick is telling you to keep your chin up, something at the very heart of your plan for political office is absolutely fucked. But there's never been a better time to be a Tory, on the other hand. You're in power, you're really unpopular, you're blatantly nasty, and you've got more people voting for you than ever before. Let's be honest, Theresa May could call a general election right now and run on a slogan of, go fuck yourself, Britain. <laughs> and still win in a landslide against this bloody opposition. 
panel, do the Tories even have to bother <laughs> turning up anymore, Vanessa? I just think you should phone her immediately and suggest that as a slogan. It's absolutely it wouldn't sensational. Matter. It's the best slogan I've heard for years. Exactly. Go fuck yourself applies to all and sundry, and it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> We'd go out on the street and we'd yeah. say, what do you think of this thing? Go, well, obviously, I don't like the slogan, but I can't see myself voting for Labour or UKIP. I think they so... say, I love the slogan, go mm. fuck yourself, and go fuck a Tory if possible. Um... <laughs> Are the Tories now the party of the working people, as they claim, Steve? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, there was a focus group in Rochdale before the election, and they said, um, how would you describe each of the parties? And they said, well, the Labour are like a clapped-out old banger, but the Tories are a Rolls-Royce driven carelessly, oh. which I thought was a very good it's analogy. poetic. And they said, well, what about you, Kit? They said, well, that's like a, a tank draped in uh, St George livery. Mm. I said, well, no, I for me, obviously, I think the Tory one's bang on the money, as is Labour, but I think that the, 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 the UKIP car is, is basically a clown car driven by an imbecile that smells of dog shit. <laughs> um, I, th I think you're absolutely right, where it becomes a, a, a vote against the opposition, yeah. and a vote to say, really, Corbyn now is the... T and he's no. Paul Nuttall said that Stoke was only the party's 72nd highest priority. Is this just <laughs> another <laughs> one of his hilarious lies, Vanessa? Well, I mean, his list of lies really is yeah. extraordinary, isn't it? I have a PhD. Oh, no, you don't. I've lost my nearest and dearest in Hillsborough. No, you haven't. You didn't actually know any of them. You're only a child. You've never <laughs> met any of them. And it's 72 on my... Where did he get the idea of 72 on my priorities list to win this by-election? I, I don't know. It I, makes I you know. wonder why he stood for that seat, if oh, it was maybe that he wasn't uh, really unimportant. standing. He was sitting or lying or reclining on a chaise long. What a fucking weirdo, right? Yeah, what he's, a weirdo. he's something of a Walter Mitty character. He is a strange well, I, dude, isn't he? Yeah. I thought I, what I would do in the interest of research for this show oh, yeah. is I'll have a look at his website mm. that he... That's so read. That, that it, which is... And it's... A, it, 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 two days and a day and an hour before the election, it didn't exist. It was down <laughs> for me. <laughs> that's extraordinary. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, That is amazing. amazing. Um, now, Paul Nuttall has obviously fucked himself by being a scouser that lied about Hillsborough. What could Jeremy Corbyn do now to put off his supporters? Because he's got this hardcore of support that will seem to elect him, the members of the party, no matter what he does. Is there anything you can imagine, panel, that he could do to alienate them? Yes. When, um, when Theresa May went to the House of Lords and had to sit on the steps because of tradition and watch them and scrutinise them, he could go and sit on her knee and ask her to breastfeed him and then do that in front oh, of the God, Lord. And then, Jesus. I think, don't you think that would nauseate Oh, even Vanessa. Even they would say it hasn't oh. really happened and the mainstream media had manipulated the footage. From my experience, that's what Corbynista said. <laughs> I thought that would be say. the path forward. I thought that would yeah. be the way. No? OK. Oh. Thanks, panel. There now follows a message from the Right Honourable Jeremy Corbyn. Hello. I'm Jeremy Corbyn. I'm the leader of the Labour Party. That's right. I'm the fucking leader. Get used to it. People call me scruffy. Well, I suppose I do look a bit rough when I'm on the box, but those are my work clothes, aren't they? I mean, you want to see me on my holidays? Oh! Waltzing down the Plastas Americanos in my espadrilles, me Pierre Cardin. <laughs> Tidy bit of fanny on me arm. <laughs> Large cerveza on the go. Tan to fuck. <laughs> Don't mind if I do, you cheeky cunt. Oh, <laughs> the Now, British society has been rocked to its very core this week. We thought 2016 was a year that had turned the world upside down, but Brexit... Trump, the death of every living celebrity, especially David Bowie, who was the best one, of course, was mere trivia compared to what has happened this week when Sutton United reserve goalkeeper Wayne Fatty Shaw <laughs> ate a pie at a football match. From the moment he bit into that sweet crust on that baked good, nothing would ever be the same again for him, for football, or for this crazy, messed-up, damp little place we call Britain. Just look at him. <laughs> to an untrained eye, he might just look like a fat man eating a pie because he was a bit hungry. But nothing could be further from the truth. Wayne wasn't just hungry for mere pie. He was <laughs> hungry for cash and fame, but also for pie. <laughs> you see, bookies were offering odds of eight to one that Wayne would be seen eating a pie during his team's televised FA Cup tie against Arsenal last Monday. And it's rumoured he profited from this arrangement to the tune of a cool 100 grand. Also, more importantly, one warm meat pie. 
Some have called Fatty Shaw corrupt, greedy and self-interested. I call him an old-fashioned British hero. Here is a man who, with one simple action, eating a pie, stood up to the dry corporate world of modern football, a game taken from ordinary men like Wayne Fatty Shaw to be run as a billion pound industry, remodelled in a trendy, metrosexual image. So far from his own, it might as well be played by fucking jellyfish. <laughs> Wayne Shaw is a beautiful reminder that there is still such a thing as a fat goalie, whose nickname <laughs> is Fatty. I can feel my nostalgia gland trembling for a funnier, more innocent time where footballers weren't boring and men had heart attacks earlier in life. But is he being carried aloft on his teammates' shoulders? No, he's not. Firstly, that would be impossible. But secondly, he's had to quit his job and the humorless FA have come down hard on him, launching an inquiry to determine whether he's breached gambling regulations. Even Sutton chairman Bruce Elliott went on Five Live to claim that the fame of briefly appearing on camera during a fourth round FA Cup tie against Leeds United had obviously got to <laughs> Wayne's head. Like so many stars before him, Kurt Cobain, Charlie Sheen, Jade Goody, he had flown too close to the sun. And now, inevitably, comes the downfall. It can only be a matter of days before Wayne Shaw is found dead on Hollywood Boulevard, <laughs> floating in the pool of a three-star hotel. The only sign he was ever there, a demolished all-you-can-eat cold buffet in the poolside cabana and an empty Coke wrapper stained with pork pie jelly. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. Another is that it was just a fat goalie eating a pie. <laughs> Panel, is Wayne Shaw a big, fat British hero, Fern? Uh, he's living my dream, uh, yeah. Athens. <laughs> he's been offered a, a year of free pies from Morrison's mm. and uh, a job as a professional pie taster. But at the same time, he's living my nightmare, because see if that happened to a girl, if that happened to me, I'd get offered a deal for Weight Watchers mm. or something. It'd be like this terrible moment, and then I'd have an exercise DVD deal come out. Uh, so I don't think he's going to be shamed. That could be quite thing. lucrative. Oh, yeah, but I suppose it would be shaming. Uh, yeah. Steve. Yes. Was life better when all our professional athletes drank, smoked and ate pies, or is that just rose-tinted bollocks? I absolutely agree. Because mm. I, I, as soon as... I'm, I'm not a big sports fan, but I used to like the fact that you could go to non-league football uh, or even kind of the lower division football where there wasn't that divide, that gulf yeah. between um, away goalie and, and, uh, and home fans. Yes. Where you could just go, Oi! Fatty! Yeah. Arsehole, yeah. and you and mm. and they were that far away. Mm. So and because the noise was so low in the you stadium, you could really get into their minds and you talk really, to them. And exactly. that really was what football was all about back all then. All about it? absolutely where you can you had a say in the game. Yeah, but Vanessa, what would you like to see Wayne Shaw do next with his life? I would like to commend his manners. Imagine if he decided to eat, for example, spag ball. How complex it would have been that the, the, the not during Brexit thing. times you, know, you wouldn't be out What if he decided to have sushi? I mean, it was at least a pie, which yes. is a neat and fairly chic item to consume, <laughs> isn't it? When you're, it's contained. Did you say drink. chic? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. Because think of all the kind of gunky, sort of grungy things he could have eaten. Imagine if he was eating a roast dinner <laughs> and he was trying to cut up a new. To be clear, Vanessa, yes. I don't know how often you go to football, but. Uh, Sushi and spag bowl aren't available at most grounds. Just, just, just saying. That's just like a note in case you ever do find yourself at Spurs or Arsenal or something like well, there's that. There's no polenta, is that what you're trying to tell me? Never no. ask for no a salad noir. nice soir at oh. a football match. I learned the hard way. <laughs> Steve, what's the stupidest thing you've ever done for money other than appearing on this show? But the thing is, in our profession, well, we are whores. So, yeah. really, if the money's and right, he didn't, I'll do anything. He didn't literally. think he was, did he? And then suddenly he's one of us. One of us. <laughs> one of us. That's, a, that's what you are now, Wayne. He'll be on here next week, won't he? Yeah, why not? You'd be uh, thrilled to have him. With any luck. Yeah, we absolutely yeah. would. Thanks, panel. Coming up after the break, I'll be talking to hard-working MP for Rochelle Simon Danchuk, so long as he can make time in his busy schedule of having sex with all of his constituents. <laughs> See you in a minute. <laughs> so not only was I the only one still conscious, but three of the plane's four engines had died just as I was coming up on my fifth pill. True story. I mean, I look back and laugh now. But Jesus. <laughs> oh, hi, everyone. Uh, this week, everyone's going on about marriage. And not just any old marriage. Gay marriage. That old hot potato. I don't know about you, but I assumed we'd sorted all that out around the same time that David Gray was riding high in the charts and Brian Harvey from E17 accidentally ate three tuna jacket potatoes and ran over his own head. I thought the old thing was a done deal. But apparently, the Church of England disagree, as their House of Bishops 
House of Bishops? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Sam. House of Bishops. Your one-stop shop for bishops, archdeacons, normal deacons and bishops. With free delivery, under seal and two years warranty, there's never been a better time to own a bishop. Buy two bishops and get a third half price. Just off the A23, Pearly Way, Croydon. Late opening Thursdays, House of Bishops. Your bishop may be repossessed if you fail to keep up payments. Anyway, the House of Bishops has released a report saying that the church need to adopt a new culture of welcoming and supporting the lifestyles of gay and lesbian people as long as those lifestyles don't involve getting married in their fucking church. This has caused controversy within the church as the General Synod, who I'm pretty sure is also a character in Superman 2, <laughs> has voted against the bill. Fuck's sake, here we go again. And if it wasn't enough that the gays are kicking up a fuss about marriage, now the straights are at it too. A heterosexual couple have gone to court to protest their right to have a civil partnership, which is basically just a slightly shitter version of marriage invented by the government to discriminate against gay people. What next? Heterosexuals campaigning to be banned from the military or demanding to be harassed whenever they do a kiss in a pub? <laughs> Having said that, I do think straight men should be allowed to hang out in girls' changing rooms. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> when I was young, marriage was much simpler. You found a girl with big knockers who didn't ask too many questions about how you were feeling or why you hadn't mentioned her new shoelaces, and you asked her to spend the rest of her life with you. Then you bought a house for £2,000, took some ecstasy and got a job on a magazine. It was that simple. <laughs> but the truth is that people have always had to deal with difficult questions about marriage, as evidenced by this archive documentary we've dug up from the 1960s. Nowadays, it seems like everyone's at it. He's at it, she's at it. I'll oh, keep your head on, missus. I'm talking about marriage. Mind you, you should see what comes next. <laughs> see, marriage is a bit of paper that says that a man and a woman can live together in a big ass and no one can say a thing about it. Some people reckon that men should be able to marry other men. Well, not if this bloke has anything to say about it. He reckons the two fellas put it on their suits to say some vows and whatnot is a mortal sin. Speak for yourself, mate. I wouldn't mind marrying a bloke. Someone to play a bit of snooker with, go down the dogs on a Saturday. Mind you, I don't fancy spending eternity in hell. I mean, are you supposed to get any kip when your bed's all on fire? Anyway, what's next? Dogs getting married? <laughs> well, it's all right with me. Go on, mate. Show her where you buried that bone. Dirty beggar. <laughs> Very different times. <laughs> there you have it. Panel, should we just cut our losses and scrap marriage altogether, Vanessa? Yeah, why not? I think so. I mean, I've, I've just paid for two daughters' weddings. Oh, oh, my, oh, oh God. God. And think how much I would have paid them to elope or Gretna Green or something else. Yeah. I mean, shocking. You know, all those bridesmaids matching the cake, matching the table the, centres. The, Who needs it, quite the frankly? Full whack, the full whack, the full job. The full thing, twice. Oh my twice. Lord. The heterosexual couple who want civil partnership don't want marriage because they say it has too much patriarchal baggage. Unbelievable. Do you and they feel... look like an... Inter you know, that strike me as a very joyless, very joyless yeah. couple. Yeah. Who shouldn't I'll in any way what, be If they were at having all. a wedding, I wouldn't want to go no, to the exactly. after party. <laughs> Zero it would be no got, fucking fun they? whatsoever, you look at them, it? you think, do you fancy each other? No. Uh, Fern, should we make marriage simple like in the olden days? Just 50 people in a pub and a honeymoon in Morecambe. Yeah, I find it disgusting, the amount people spend on weddings. And it's been shown that the more you spend on a wedding, the more likely you are to get divorced within a year. I don't know why. But I hate this thing of um, people using religion as a legitimate way to be homophobic. Like, mm. my gran says she's Irish, and she's like, we can't have gay marriage in Northern Ireland because it would ruin the sanctity of marriage. Just be <laughs> honest and say, I'm disgusted by men bumming. I think you're so right, Fern, that effectively what this really boils down to, if people are honest, is that people in the church are disgusted by the act of bumming. Mm. Yeah. That's really what this is. Yes. Should they have gay marriages, but in the vows, make the two gays swear, vow, never to bum? Because, yeah. of course, well, there's no way they could police on the Lord's that. Day. They couldn't police that, could they? You could say it in the church, but they wouldn't... How would the bishops know I've whether seen, you then went off and bummed? I've well, seen many know. a cleric who'd thoroughly enjoy being the policeman for that, actually. Yeah, that, you're right. Thoroughly yeah. enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, panel. Now it's time for my special guest. 
Hey, welcome Mr. Danjo, the political snitching farmer. Simple Simon's too busy sexting, and his behavior's too out of order. You grass up Chris Tune and him wife, after you don't get rich pan expenses. As an MP, you need more training. So right now, you are get an intensive rat deal. Kick, 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 kick him out. Kick, 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 kick him out. Kick him out, kick him out, kick, 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 kick him out. Yes, it's Labour MP for Rochdale, Simon Danchuk. Simon, welcome back to News Thing. Good to be here. Pleasure to have you back on the show. Now, you're from the north, from a constituency that clearly voted to leave mm. the EU. So, is it true that you're all racists now? No, that's not true, oh. actually. No, that's completely untrue. Oh. Uh, but people do want to leave, and that's what we've got to support. I, I wanted to remain, and I campaigned to remain, but the majority of the country uh, want to leave, and that's what I think we should do. Uh, it is interesting in Parliament, though, I have to say, you, you go around the place, and the Conservative MPs are, are jubilant about the result, obviously. Uh, and they see us doing more trade outside the European Union now, so they want to do trade in the Commonwealth and things like that. They're sort of harking back to this sort mm. of colonial era. I think oh, they, they yeah. want us all wearing pith helmets and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, gin and tonic yeah, out exactly. on the port yeah, sort yeah. of scenario. Uh, now, Paul Nuttall's whole stick since he became leader yeah. has been based on UKIP taking Labour's place, especially in the North, in your territory. Now, are you just going to take that line down or are you prepared to fight him bare knuckle in a pub basement of his choice. Well, politics can get pretty rough, rough up in the north, and certainly yeah. in Rochdale. And uh, and I, I think I'd uh, I think I'd have a good chance of fighting him. Actually, I'd uh, you know I'd, I think I could hold me on. I think uh, he says he was trained as a ninja. Yeah, um, well, yeah, for, for probably eight is. years by a sensei up a mountain in China. But who knows well, whether that's true? He could probably <laughs> prove it in some way. I'm sure he yeah. could. Yeah, he's, that's he's right. got photos. Yeah. Now we're filming this before the by-election, mm. I should say, and take away the magical illusion of television. We are pre-recording this, but by the time it goes out, people will know what's happened in yeah. Copeland and in Stoke in these by-elections. Uh, tell me what you think might happen after the by-elections for your party. Uh, of course, we will edit this to make you look wrong yeah. and stupid Thank you. I should warn you. No, that I appreciate fair. that. But yeah, how yeah. do you see this panel? I think there's a number of scenarios. If uh, I think Labour's going to do badly, whatever the result, just, you know, because the results are going to be so close and that's not that can't be good for Corbyn but if we lose the seats then I think he's going to struggle to stay on as leader and it won't be so much the right wing within the Labour Party that are calling for him to go I think his own kind of people will be calling for him to go the other possible scenario is that if Labour do very badly then it's quite feasible and all the chatter around Westminster is that Theresa May the Prime Minister might well go to the country and call a general election sooner than we might think, because she would just increase the majority. The House will have to vote on that, wouldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's not so, as straightforward so, as it used to be. You know, there will be a lot of Labour MPs mm. who will not want a general election no. because they'll be out of a job. I mean, even you Quite will possibly. be looking at your constituency thinking, well, anything's possible. So you wouldn't necessarily... If she could try to call an election, it might be a strange situation where the opposition who would usually be the ones crying out for an election, will be the ones voting against it. And But Labour MPs would look absolutely crazy to deny the public the opportunity to go <laughs> yeah. and, and say who should be in power. So we would have to vote. It's a rock and a hard place, but it you'd feel indeed. like Turkey's voting for Christmas. That's exactly you? what it would be like, yeah. Let's talk about Edward Heath, because obviously this is an area that you have a lot of knowledge about. Um, it's been reported that Wiltshire Police Chief is 120% convinced that Edward Heath was a paedophile. Is that an irresponsible claim, or do you agree that the evidence is there? I, I think there are some outrageous claims about uh, Edward Heath, you know, some of the stories that circulate on the internet and things. But having said that, I also think there are some serious allegations that are made against him, uh, and, and so there are some uh, alleged victims out there. And that means that those allegations have to be investigated to the satisfaction uh, of, of the victims and of the police themselves. And as uncomfortable as that might make some particularly conservative politicians who stick up for Heath, the truth is it has to be investigated. But do you feel it's almost like Britain isn't ready to know whether or not it had, in the recent past, a paedophile prime minister? Oh, well, I think Britain is not very good at dealing with these issues full stop. I think you're exactly right. I think other countries, have, uh, uh, in terms of child sexual abuse, have been much better at investigating it and, and calling into question what's been going on. I think Britain is very much behind the times and the establishment often wants to cover this up. I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Simon Danchett, we're going to play a game now. All right. Now, a lot of people like to paint a picture of you 
as some kind of, how can I put it, sex craze maniac. Anyone that knows you knows you're actually a hardworking constituency MP dedicated to making Rochdale a better place. So let's test your commitment to Rochdale as we play a game that we like to call can Simon Danchuk answer some questions about his constituency while being distracted by a sexy lady? <laughs> so Simon, I'm going to ask you some quick fire questions about your constituency. Rochdale, you have one minute to answer as many as possible. It really is as simple as that. So let's kick things off. Start the clock. What colour is the bin used for mixed recycling in Rochdale? Mm, is it... Is it green and blue? Correct. Rochdale AFC playing what colours? Oh, blue and black. Correct. By what name is Rochdale referred to in the Doomsday Book? I have absolutely no idea, actually. It's Reeston Manor. Which ex-party leader attended a Hendu in Rochdale in 2014? I don't know the answer to that. One. William Haig. Which politician was caught up in a scandal involving a sex worker from Rochdale? Jeffrey Archer. Correct. Thieves in Rochdale recently stole an elderly man's fence. What did they build it with? Uh, the, yeah, they used the fence. What did they make, build with yeah, it? So, yeah, den. Okay. They made a den. Which Rochdale massage parlour is widely suspected to be a brothel? I'm given to understand, though I can't confirm it, that it's called Bailey's. Bailey's of Rochdale, correct. Uh, to the nearest thousand, how many recorded incidents of fly tipping were there in Rochdale in 2016? Oh, I would guess at 2,000. It's 6,000. And time's up. Time's up. You did very well, you Thank stayed you. focused. Did you feel that his eyes were upon you at any moment? No, he did very Thank well. You. I think we can class as a victory. You are officially a hard-working uh, constituency MP. Above all else, what you do in your private life is completely up to you. Thanks, Simon. And thanks to our belly dancer, Tevech, too. Thanks also to my panel, Fern Brady, Steve First and Vanessa Feltz. Now, it's the last minute of the show, which is the traditional moment where I eat a baked good. This is not just because it's a delicious piping hot savoury treat, but also because a shadowy Malaysian betting syndicate <laughs> have placed huge amounts of money on me doing it and won't return my family until I do. If my family aren't returned to me, that would leave me at home entirely alone, able to do whatever I like at a time that suits me and no longer requiring a four-seater car. I suppose I could get a two-seater with a sportier engine, couldn't I? You know what, I just remembered I had some sushi before I came on the show. I'll, I'll leave it, I'm all right, thanks. See you next time, chums. <laughs>